I'm not jealous of Jesus. I'm jealous for Jesus. It really kind of makes me aggravated when people do everything else under the sun at Christmas except honor Him whom Christmas is supposed to be all about. And if you love Jesus this morning, that would bother you. What if it is your birthday that's supposed to be celebrating and everybody done everything else under the sun except recognize you? And everybody got a gift but you. Boy, that would be worse than not having a birthday at all, wouldn't it? And uh, so I'm going to read to you about the story here in the book of Matthew chapter 2 about uh, the early days of the Lord when He was born in Bethlehem. And uh, we understand about the time change here when these wise men came to Him. And by, of course, time they got there, the Lord was uh, maybe even up somewhere below two years old. And there was a time change there. All that didn't happen the very night He was born, as you understand that. But anyway, we'll read it all together and make a Christmas story out of it. And he said in verse 1, Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. Now they had it right, didn't they? They said, We're here to worship him. We're just here to worship him. Hey, you guys want to have a Christmas party? Yeah. What are you going to do? Worship Him. We're going to worship Him. That's why we're here. We come to worship Him. Now, when Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled. He was jealous of Jesus. He was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. When he gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. He said, where was this kid born? They said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for well, thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. See, he wanted to know how about approximately how old it was. And don't call him a babe here in this scripture. He says he's a young child. So, uh... Uh, he says somewhere in the past two years that kid was born. Verse number 8, And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. Now, there's two fellows already said they're going to worship him. One of them meant it and one of them didn't. That fellow in verse 8 didn't have no business having no Christmas. He didn't. He says, uh, tell me where he's at so I can come and worship him. You know what he wanted. He wanted to kill him. He didn't want no part of him. He shouldn't even get off work for Christmas, should he? Anybody that don't honor the Lord Jesus Christ and honor Him, they ought to have to work every day right through the Christmas holiday. That's what he's what it's all about. Anybody that leaves him out of their Christmas uh, festivities ought not to get out of school. Have to go to school every day. Amen. You're a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite if you take time off from work to honor a man's birthday and don't honor him. Don't ever talk about all the hypocrites in the church. Look at all the hypocrites out in the world that have playboy bunnies dressed in Santa Claus suits come in and never mention Jesus and say, Oh boy, my Christmas vacation. There's your hypocrites. There's your hypocrites. I wouldn't want to take a vacation to honor Satan, would you? Well, they said, all right, everybody rest next Tuesday. It's Satan's birthday. I'd say, man, I'll work harder that day than I ever have. <laughs> all right? He said, I want to worship him, but he didn't want to worship him. Verse 9. And they had heard, when they heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came and stood over where... The young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when Herod found out where he was, he didn't rejoice with exceeding great joy. He said, there's the guy i got to get. He's going to take my place. People's going to love him more than they love me. He'll shoot me out of the saddle and rule it. He was jealous of Jesus. This morning, I'm jealous for Jesus. I'm, it aggravates me 
when people leave him out of Christmas. One of them atheists said not long ago, said, I tell you what, we're going to have to have censorship. We're going to have to do these Christians. Christmas programs and all this stuff. He said these Christians are even trying to get in Christmas nowadays. Now, you know what that shows? It shows how dumb people are nowadays. Without Him, there wouldn't be any Christmas. There wouldn't be no Christmas to have. Now, this morning, I want to talk to you about just a few things and leave you these thoughts this morning. And I think that a Christian, if you people in here are Christians this morning, you ought to put Jesus Christ first. He ought to have preeminence in everything you do, and things you say, the places you go. If you're going somewhere you can't take Him, then you shouldn't be going. If you're doing something you, you, you wouldn't, He wouldn't enjoy, you shouldn't be doing it, right? That was a crippled amen. It really was. I heard a few right in here and a few right over there, and the rest of you looking at me like, uh-oh, I'm in for it today. Something tells me I've come on the wrong Sunday morning. That's the way you look on your face. And them fake smiles don't work. So you can forget that. I've been looking at people doing this 20 years, and I can tell them fake smiles. Some people sit in their real, they're guilty as you know what, and they sit there and look at you like, <laughs> yeah, that ain't going to work, man. I can tell them real smiles and fake smiles. See, you, if you know you're guilty, then you need to get right with God. Don't get mad at me. I'm just delivering the mail, okay? Well, let's think about how people do at Christmas this year. Let's think about how how you do and how I do and how other people do at Christmas this year. Here's the average mentality of the average person now at Christmas. He's not on their shopping list. He's not on their shopping list, but they sure think they should be on his gift, uh, gift list, don't they? I mean, he's not on their list. I've seen people out, you know, I've seen them out the other day. I've done a little shopping. And I've seen these women, they were checking over here, and they'd get something and they'd check it off their list. And then they'd look on the list. Well, now there's little Johnny. He's my nephew, and he's, uh, let's see, what size shoe does he wear? And they were looking for Johnny for Christmas, you know. Well, got him some. Check him off. And I'll bet you if you stop the first uh, 50 people in the mall in Hickory or Asheville or Walmart or somewhere, and you said, excuse me, can I see your list? You look down there and say, Uncle Tom, Joe, uh, yeah, mother-in-law, yuck. Uh, uh, but i got to get her something anyway. Uh, Daddy-in-law, so, uh, there's my cousin. Adult. You know, you'd have all that. And you look, uh, how many people you think would have Jesus Christ on there? It's His birthday, right? I mean, we know it really ain't His birthday, but that's the day you celebrate His birthday. He's, he's the one you're supposed to be thinking about. Can I ask you a question? What are you giving the Lord this year? I know people don't even go to church on Christmas because it's Christmas. What are you talking about? You think we're going to go to church? It's the Lord's birthday, man. I remember one time it was Christmas, Christmas fell on Sunday and somebody asked me, they said, you're not going to have services, are you? That's screwed up, man. I mean, somebody's brain, their elevator ain't going all, their bricks ain't laid straight. That's what, that's what the purpose of the whole thing is. If there's one day a year when we ought to get up and say, whoo, I get to go to church and worship Him that was born in Bethlehem's manger, it ought to be on Christmas. It ought to be Christmas time. We ought to have a bigger crowd next Sunday than we've had all year, right? But it ain't never happened yet. That's about the least crowd most churches have. Or the Sunday after that, on December 26th. Because, man, we're so busy. He's not on our spin list. Boy, we'll get, we'll rake and we'll scrape and we'll buy and we'll borrow and beg and go in debt and pull out the charge cards and not let their husband find out that we've got that. He, you told him you got rid of them all, but you lied. And you kept, oh, that one, it just come in the mail the other day. That one, and you don't, it don't charge you much interest. I mean, only about 300%. And, uh, you, you can probably have it paid off the next Christmas. It wasn't, but $89. The time you pay for it, it'll be 750 or something like that. And you say, oh, but I've got to get it. I've got to get it. They've been wanting that old pair of boots. So I'm going to get Grandpa them boots. And, and I'm going to get Mama all them, them tennis shoes she's been wanting. And, and boy, and never think about the Lord. Never. 
everything about the Lord. You say, well, what am I going to give Him? Well, uh, I don't know. You reckon the offerings will go up or down during Christmas season at most churches? Uh, you think the mission support goes up or you think it goes down? You want to give the Lord a good gift? I tell you what, put a hundred dollars in a mission offering. You say, you want them preachers preaching about money? It ain't for me. It's for missionaries all over the world. And if you want to give the Lord something that He had to be pleased with, say, Lord, I'm going to give this to a missionary in Your name so they can buy tracts and win some people to Jesus and keep them out of hell. What about that for a Christmas present to Jesus Christ? We had some people come up here a few Sunday mornings ago, lying all the way across the front. And uh, we got... Uh, some of our buses are on their last leg, people. We got three that's about ready right now to give up the ghost. They are they are running on. I mean, we've had them where you can see the highway going under you when you ride down the road. You have to pull them off to get them started and drag them in to, to finish. We had when, no that no joke. When we had the Christmas play up there a few weeks ago, we had all our buses in the Christmas play. I believe we had all of them, uh, eight or nine, and uh, we had a tow chain up there because we figured Bruce did that one of them would conk out and we'd tow it down the street in the parade. And uh, and uh, one of them did die, sure enough. I think they finally got it cranked up and it come on down the street. I was just thinking, God, we wasn't behind them horses. And that was the blessing of the Lord that we wasn't behind them. But anyway, we finally got all the way all down the street in the parade. And did you know something? Did you know? Well, Brother Gentry had all them people stand up here and they said, Hey, I, uh, everybody give $100 and we can buy some new buses within the next several months. We've already had $1,200 give, something like that, on some new buses. And... Uh, you want to give the Lord something? Try that. Try that on. Give Him a gift, man. He, we're, he's not on our shopping list. But oh, when He gives out the blessings, we think, well, the Lord is not blessing me. The Lord, oh, you know who give you every breath of air you breathe, you breathe this week? He did. Every time your lungs went... He's the one that made them do it. You say, oh, no, I'm a strong boy. Now, who kept you breathing while you was asleep last night? He did. All those are gifts. When it don't rain, we gripe. Why don't He give us something? Why don't He give us something? Don't you think He might be up there in heaven saying, here it is, Christmas season. They claim to honor me. They honor me with their lips. They'll stand up and sing silent night. But their heart is far from me. He's not on their shopping list, but they sure expect to be on His. Boy, when it comes time to Him to give out the gifts, man, they want to be at the top. Gimme, 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 Lord. Gimme, gimme, gimme. He's not invited to their Christmas suppers, but they sure expect to be invited to that great supper that He'll hold in the sky one day. I mean, they have Christmas suppers all this time of year. You see people just loading down them buggies with rolls and corn on the cob. And I mean, steaks and chicken and all that kind of stuff. And I heard somebody say the other day, say, let's, we're going, let's, let's cook some steaks. We're going to do this, do that. Ah, oh, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's good fellowship and all of that. But did you know there are literally thousands of get-togethers like that? We're going to get together and they're going to, they're going to get, all the friends are going to be invited and they're going to have a big time and they're going to uh, heat up the grill, lay them steaks on that grill. They're going to have all kinds of seasoning. Uh, they're going to have the rooms decorated. They're going to have, a, have it warm in there and maybe it be snowing outside and they're going to take them steaks out and put them on them plates and dump the, the A1 sauce or whatever on them and put that knife down in there and saw a piece of it off and never even think about Jesus Christ and stick a piece of that in their mouth and never mention and him never bow their head to thank him for that food. It's just, yeah, man, boy, we're having it made, boy. Everybody's griping about the economy, how sorry it is. That's a news media brainwash technique, man. You've never ate better in your life. You've never lived better in your life. You've never dressed better in your life. Brother, God's been so good to us, and we don't even want him around. Amen. Hey, how many Christmas parties you think will be held in big shot houses in Hollywood and New York and Detroit and Chicago and Florida and everywhere else where they're going to dig into a big steak supper and have rolls and dessert and everything and never even mention His name? Not even mention Him. And if you did mention it, it'd ruin the whole thing. You say, boy, my boss says, well, I'll come to our Christmas party at work, preacher. And they say, uh, you know what? If you, if you do have to go to one... Boy, wouldn't it be a blessing if you just stood up and say, Wait! Hold it right there. We're all here together together to honor the one that 
that's born in Bethlehem's manger. He's going to come back one of these days and blow everything up too. Boy, you'll see them heads start dropping, man. Why do you have to bring that up? Well, don't eat your steak, you hypocrite. If he's the reason you're eating the steak, you won't honor him. Push the steak back. Amen. I'm jealous for the Lord this morning. It makes me mad people do everything else and celebrate in His name and then get mad at you if you mention His name. Boy, just get up and say, you know what they say nowadays? Have you noticed this year, all they say now is the holidays, the holidays, the holidays. They don't even want to mention it as Christmas anymore. They're wanting Him out. They're pushing Him out. And I thank God this morning, brother. He's a, he, what if you stood up at your uh, uh, your plant dinner and said, "Oh, I want to say something. I just want to thank the Lord that He let His Son be born of a virgin." Amen. And somebody come up and say, "Oh, oh, that's impossible. That's scientifically impossible. A man can't be born of a vir- virgin." Oh, yeah, he can. The Bible said that he didn't have a father, an earthly father. His mother was a virgin, and they're going to say it's impossible. Science has proven that a woman cannot have bring a man into this world without the aid of a human father. It is impossible for a man to have a baby. He couldn't have got here without a daddy. And then you'll say, oh man, I know one better than that. Adam and Eve got here without a mama or a daddy. What do you think about that? Amen? Hey, Adam and Eve, hey, it ain't no big deal he was born of a virgin. God made him born of a virgin. God invaded the womb of that virgin maiden and planted in her that holy seed. And the Holy Ghost overshadowed that Jewish maid. And that holy thing was called the Son of God. That was God's Son laying in the manger. That was God from heaven in that manger. He was God. And He's looking at you right now while I'm preaching. He's not mentioned in their conversation. He's not invited to their parties. He don't. He's not wanted at their suppers. When it comes time for that supper in the sky and that Lord, uh, that that uh, uh, marriage supper of the Lamb, they're going to say, "Oh Lord, remember me, don't you? You're going to take me up in the rapture. You remember me, don't you, Lord? I went to church every Sunday. How about, boy? I can't wait till the marriage of the Lamb. If you want Him to take you to His supper, you ought to be man enough to take Him to yours." He's not the guest at their parties. But they sure expect to be in that great gathering over yonder in heaven. You know what? I've never, since I've been saved, I've never understood. I mean, some of you might get, some of you probably going to get mad at me before I get through this morning, but I don't believe the Lord's mad at me. I believe, I believe he's looking down there saying, hey man, I appreciate you taking up for me down there. People don't want me at the, you know what aggravates the fire out of me? These Christmas specials. I remember a long time ago you used to watch these Christmas specials and you'd have all these movie stars. Isn't it funny how they can... I mean, it's almost sickening. Here some of these people get there and sing. <laughs> and he was drunk last night. You know. You know, people, Chris Christopherson, you know. and Dolly, bless her heart. I mean... Lordy mercy, people. I've, <laughs> I've heard people say, Now Dolly's a good Christian. Now, you better just shut your mouth. She might be saved. I don't know. She might be saved. But I'm, I'm telling you, you say yes, her Brother Danny, because I sing a good Christmas song with Kenny Rogers. Yeah, yeah, I bet you did. She's probably going to make a new movie next year called The Best Little Sunday School in Tennessee. Sequel to the best little whorehouse in Texas. Now that's a fine Christian lady. Fine Christian. You say, well, I don't think you ought to say that. You know why? Because you like them movie stars better than you do Jesus, and I like Jesus better than I do them. I'm jealous for Him! It's not right for them to cuss and rant and rave and tell dirty jokes and show their nudity and lust the whole show, and then all get at the last and sing away in a manger. Amen? He's not the guest at their parties. Hey, you go in them average Christmas party nowadays. I mean, you know, where the, where the stripper busts up out of the cake, you know, and the champagne bottles are opening up and everybody's going wild and cussing and everything. And they say, hey, I want to say something for Jesus Christ. Watch what happens. You talk to every one of them people and they're going to heaven. 
They want to be guests of the Lord's parties, don't they? Amen. He's not in their home, but they sure want to live in His one these days. You go in the average home nowadays, here's what you see. And I know, I don't bust right yesterday. You see homes where it ain't nothing, where Jesus is hardly ever mentioned, if ever. And all you see is a stack of movies from the movie house about that high. And that's all they've done all weekend. I'm telling you, He's not in our homes. That's what's wrong with America this morning is the breakdown of that home. You want to find out why there's trouble in the schools? You want to find out why there's trouble in the streets of America? You go out and get in the homes. You'll find out. Our, Our streets and our schools are nothing more than an overflow of what's happening in our homes in this nation. And Jesus Christ is not the head of most homes. It's fussing and arguing and fighting and, and it's like going into a smoke-filled honky-tonk of the morning uh, of the, of the, of any time you go in and never mention His name. But they want to be in His home one day when He said, I've gone to prepare a place for you. We don't want Him. But how dare He ever say He don't want us. Well, now we're going to have a party here. Jesus, it just really would be something you would enjoy. But what if He did that to you? I wouldn't doubt the Lord don't do that one of these days. There's some of these people who live for the devil all their life and when He gets ready to die, they're going to say, Lord, let us in, let us in, we want to come. And they'll say, I don't really think you'd enjoy what we're going to do here. They wouldn't enjoy it. Hey, do you enjoy seeing one of these people jump up and go, Glory to God! I'm glad I'm saved! Do you like that? Well, you'd like heaven then. If you don't like that, you wouldn't enjoy heaven. I know some people that'd be miserable if they went to heaven. Because every time somebody shouts, they go... They act like they're about to choke to death. What the Lord Lord said... uh, He said, do you go to church? No, I I went to church every Sunday, Lord. And the Lord said, all right. And He ain't going to do that, but let's say that. Lord said, all right. You went to church every Sunday, right? You forgot me all week. That's right, Lord. I really, I was a pretty bad fellow. Okay, you go to hell and you burn six days, then I'll let you come up here every Sunday. Then you go back and burn for six days, and then I'll let you come up here every Sunday. Or better yet, just Sunday morning for two hours. You didn't even go on Sunday night. One hour, you didn't go to Sunday school. Get out of hell one hour a week. What if the Lord lets you out of hell in proportion to how much time you spent in His work and for His glory down here? Huh? Hey, it's Him we're supposed to be honoring. Some of you didn't come to, you didn't come to Sunday school this morning. You don't think enough of Jesus to come an hour earlier and study. Now, now don't, not my fault you didn't come. You're looking at me like, well, I ain't the one that did it. You are. Get mad at yourself. Kick yourself, I guess. See? For you that couldn't see, it's like this. Pow! I'm using the wrong end of my boot, but I can't use the right end. I'd really be weird if I could do that. But I want to tell you something, brother. Kick yourself, man! Kick yourself! Get right with God! Get to church on Wednesday night. Do something for God. Spend some time. It's His birthday. It's Him we're supposed to be honoring. You know who? You know who the biggest false god of Christmas is, don't you? It's old Ho-Ho. I don't think this message would be complete if I didn't, in, if I didn't at least in passing. I'm jealous this morning for Jesus over Santa Claus. Santa Claus has stole the glory that Jesus is supposed to have at Christmas and you know it and I know it and ain't no use acting like you don't know it. You ask the average nowadays, who, who is the biggest, most popular central figure of Christmas nowadays? It's Santa Claus, ain't it? Now I understand there was a man named St. Nicholas. Now I understand he's a good man. And he believed in the Lord all that. So what? That don't mean nothing to what we're doing. That's got nothing to do with what's going on nowadays. Let, let me show you. Brother John mentioned in Sunday school this morning, the Lord has three outstanding qualities. He's omniscient, He's omnipresent, and He's omnipotent. Now those are three words that describe God. Omniscient means all, omni means all, all in. He knows everything. Omnipresent, omni means all. 
He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at once. Omnipotent. Potent means strong. Right? Omnipotent. Omnipotent. He's, he can do anything. God knows everything. He can do everything. And He's everywhere at the same time. Did you know they have taken all three of those qualities that only belongs to Jesus Christ and put them on Santa Claus? Look at the first one. He's omniscient. What does that mean? It means He knows everything. You say, you mean they saying that about Santa Claus? He knows when you are sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. Now, all the little kids in the world are being told that Santa Claus knows if they're being bad or good. He knows if your kids have been good. He knows if, if, if my kids have been good. He knows all. That makes me mad. I'm jealous over that. They ain't but one that knows. You say, oh, wait, Brother Danny, it's just all in fun. Well, why can't we have fun by telling them who, the, who really is omniscient? Why can't we say, Jesus knows everything. Jesus knows you, honey. Jesus knows it. You know what your problem is? You like one of them false gods. I have parents all the time get mad at me for saying that. And they say, now you're going to spoil Christmas. I ain't going to spoil Christmas. And if your Christmas worships false gods, your Christmas ought to be spoiled. I ain't never told my kids they're a Santa Claus. I, I never carried just a little bitty kid. I never told her there's she, there, she, there a Santa That there was one. I never told her that. You say it'll warp their personality. Didn't warp her personality. I mean, warp, but that ain't what done it. <laughs> Something like that. It ain't because she didn't know they sent her. You know what I found out about kids? They don't care if it comes out of the trunk of your car or down the chimney or out of the closet, man. They just want the presents. Yeah. It's mama and daddy that gets into this Santa Claus bit. And it's a devil gets in them to make them do it. You say, you can't tell me that because I play Santa Claus, it's the devil making me do it. The Lord don't make you do that. That's a lie. You say, that's a white lie. There ain't no such thing as a white lie. He's omniscient. He knows what you're doing right now. He's omnipotent. Nothing can hinder His coming. He defies the laws of nature. And flies through the air from the north where He lives, you know. Do you know the Bible tells us that's where the Lord Jesus is? City of the north, sides of the north. That's where God lives, man. Do you know what that white beard represents? Do you read about Jesus Christ coming back in Revelation? He comes back in the clouds. He's got horses, not reindeer. And brother, he comes back and he's got a, his hair is white and his beard's white and his eyes are a flame of fire. Santa Claus is a substitute God for worshiping Jesus Christ at Christmas time. Nothing can hinder His coming, buddy. He's omnipotent. He can do anything. He can go to every house in the world in one night. And the more the population grows, the harder His job's getting. But He can do it, son. He can make it. Not only that, He's omnipresent. He's everywhere. He's watching you right now. People tell their kids all year, you better be good. Santa Claus is watching you. And that's their, that's their way to make kids be good. He's what? All right. Santa Claus seen you do that. You ain't getting that bicycle. Now, there's two things wrong with that. One, you ought to have enough control over your kids to make them behave without having to make up something like there's ghosts in the closet and booger man under your bed. And people say, there's a booger man under your bed and if you get out of bed, he'll get you. That's a lie, you liar. There ain't no booger man under their bed. Now, if they are one, tell, go in there and get them. <laughs> you parents, you need to quit your lying, you know it? You say, well, that's, that, that makes them behave. So does Hickory Switch. That's what God said to do. I ain't got time to get off on all that. He's omnipresent. You better be good. Santa Claus ain't going to bring you nothing. One little girl told her brother, said, all right, you hit me so Santa Claus ain't going to stop at your house. And her brother said, well, won't he even stop for you? You know, if he don't stop, she don't get nothing either. Not only that, he's faithful. When Santa Claus promises you something, you'll get it. You must believe Santa. That's what kids are told. I seen them down there in the mall the other day. They was lined up from here to that office door over yonder. 
holding them little old babies. There's a wallowing around. And here he sat over here. You know, and they had a photographer. That's just, that's a money racket, you know. You want to get your picture out? You better be, hey, you cry one more time. I ain't going to let you get your picture took with Santa Claus. They said, so, you know, and those, what are those kids taught? He's the greatest. He's the most wonderful. He's the one from whom all blessings flow. He's, he gives us presents. He, he's just wonderful. And the Lord sitting up there saying, what about me? What about me? He is the one that's wonderful. He is the one from whom all blessings flow. He, and if you get any good thing, it comes from Him. Every gift, every perfect gift comes down from the Father, brother. The Lord gives you. He's righteous. He makes no mistakes. He always makes it, don't he? Old people say it's going to come a bad storm. Reckon Santa Claus will make it. He's made it every year for 2,000 years. He's worshipped. They love and admire Him. Their heart jumps when they see Him. Mama, can I hug Him? Yes. Kiss Santa on the cheek. He'll give you whatever you want. He's no respecter of persons. Oh, red and yellow, black and white. They're precious in His sight. His coming is looked forward to with great expectancy. Children are thrilled to think of His coming. His coming is secret, like in the thief in the night. Right? The world don't see Him. That's a picture of the rat. I didn't know to act like I was asleep. I'd stay up at 2 o'clock on Christmas Eve. At 5 o'clock, I was up. Honest, man. I was so excited I couldn't sleep. And I'd go in and say, Look what I got! Look what I got! I never did really believe in Santa Claus. I... They about had me convinced one time when Mom left some fruit cake and coffee in the dining room and she said, Now we're going to leave this for Santa Claus. He said, Now you kids got to go to bed and be quiet or he won't come to eat it. And I was thinking, Aww, he ain't going to come in here and eat that. I don't know. Do you know this morning, sure enough, they cut off about half of that, you know, where they <laughs> drunk that coffee and left it sitting there. And, and for that, that's the only time I thought, Well, man. Kids are stupid, you know it. <laughs> I, I, I shouldn't have believed that. They about had me there. They about had me. But you know, I've heard people say, I've heard people say that when they found out there wasn't no Santa Claus, they got sick to their stomach and everything else. That's pitiful. He's just like the Lord. The eyes of the Lord never placed beholding the good and the evil. Is it right? Is it wrong to tell a lie? Sure is. Wrong to tell a lie. Sure is. His hair is white like wool. They said up there, I got out of the newspaper these kids had wrote to Santa. One of them said, Dear Santa Claus, I love you, Santa Claus. You are good to me every Christmas. You give me toys every Christmas too. One kid says, Dear Santa Claus, I like Santa Claus. I love you, Santa Claus. I want a radio and a bike. Uh, Dear Santa Claus, I want a Barbie dream house and a car. I've been as good as I could, but sometimes I've been sort of bad. Got a little convicted there, see? Conscious was bothered. Kids should be taught to be good for the Lord. Jesus is watching you. That's what I tell my kids. I tell them all the time, the Lord's watching you. You know, Daddy can't always be around you. Daddy can't see you at school. Daddy can't see you. I'm telling you one thing. The Lord's watching you everywhere you go, and don't you forget it. And He can give you weapons worse than Daddy can. Dear Santa Claus, I want to know who brings you presents. I'll give you cookies and milk. Will you give me a Barbie house? Now there's a kid taught that you're supposed to give Santa Claus. What's wrong with teaching the kids to give Jesus something? Give them a little offering. Let them put it in the offering plate. Teach them to put it in a little mission envelope. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Him. Dear Santa Claus, I've been a good boy. Please bring me lots of surprises. I hope you and Rudolph don't catch a cold. <laughs> Dear Santa Claus, I want a pocketbook and a TV and a real stove and a refrigerator and a computer. And I want baby skates. That's all. Man, live, man. That's all. That's a household shower. <laughs> Dear Santa Claus, is it cold at the North Pole? Do you like to live there? On Christmas you will come and presents under my tree. You can come down our chimney, but we will have to take out our wood stove first. 
please, please bring me. How are you thinking about it? You know, I had a little kid sitting there saying, now how's he going to get down the chimney since we put this wood stove in? Kids, man, I tell you. Dear Santa Claus, was I good? Santa, I want a castle gray skull for Christmas. You better not come down our chimney because it is cracked. <laughs> you know what? What would be wrong with saying, now listen kids, everything you get this year, Jesus let mom and daddy have a good job or we worked. And Jesus let us have our help. And Jesus give us our house. And Jesus let us have this that we're going to eat. And Jesus is the one that let us have our health. And Jesus is the one that was born in the manger. And Jesus is the one that all this good stuff, let's really do something special for Jesus this year. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? I'm jealous for Jesus. Put Him, I want you to, I want you to make up your mind this Christmas that you're going to put Him first. Don't have no activity that you can't have His blessings upon See, if you mess around with alcohol, something like that, hey, you say, well, the Lord wouldn't like this. Well, quit it then. Quit it. You say, I can't. You're lying. You're lying. You can't. You can quit. His power is greater than any power sin got over you. Let's stand and bow our heads for prayer. You need to quit making your excuses this morning and say, all right, Lord, I'm going to get honest and quit being a big thing. I'm going to put Jesus first. Jesus first. Him first. Not what I want, not what I like, not what feels good, what would honor you. You know what I'd like for us to do this morning? We're going to pray right now with every head bowed and every eye closed. And I want to ask you a question right now. Let me ask you a question right now. Is the Lord pleased? with the way you'll be spending your holidays. You say, yes, sir, preacher, I, I really do try to honor the Lord and put Him first. Okay, hallelujah, thank God. What about the rest of you? Are you where you ought to be? Huh? Why don't you just gather around the altar this morning, maybe husbands and wives and kids, teenagers, maybe just gather around this altar this morning and say, Lord, I want you to be first in my Christmas this year. The greatest Christmas you'll ever have is not when you get big expensive gifts and things like that. And I'm, there's nothing wrong with giving a gift in the name of the Lord. But the best Christmas you'll ever have is when you have that Christmas, that Jesus Christ from heaven in your soul. You need to come this morning, you come. And He'll bless you. Father, do what ought to be done in every heart and in every life. Oh God, there's people here this morning that need you. There's people here this morning that have got caught up in all the commercialism of Christmas and the hectic buying and, and rushing and planning and have just almost backslid leaving you out of their life. I pray, God, that you would help them to do it this morning and put you first and do like the wise men and say, we've come to worship Him. In Jesus' name we pray and for Jesus' sake, amen. Four, four, and amen.